Hello comrades and welcome in part 7 of our vlog, The Russian Empire. Today we will declare war on Finland and this operation will be called The Winter War According to the World War II. But not like exactly like the historical events of the World War II, we are going to demolish Finland using our huge air force composed of the level 4 strike fighters. On top of each city of Finland you will find the stack flying over it. In a state of patrol for sure it's going to engage everything on the soil. I can see from here infantry, tank divisions and also aircrafts who are in the capital Helsinki. I'm not going to expect a lot of resistance here from Finland because I don't expect him to have anti-air or something like that. So it's not going to take me a lot of time to finish him so quickly and without losing any time. But I will share with you the strategy and I will share with you the uh, steps of this war. First I started patrolling his cities with my air force. Of course the air force would be so efficient to take down everything on the soil. Later on I prepared my troops near St. Petersburg on our borders, our common borders with Finland. And I'm going to enter with my infantry. Normally I'm not going to need no anti-air, no armored vehicles, nothing in this war, only infantry and strike fighters. The, striker, uh, the strike fighters, they will clean the way for me. Everyone, every professional player who before played with Russia, he will tell you the first thing you focus on is strike fighters because they are deadly. And of course, we need to consider the good production of components of Russia and also the huge amount of fuel. So in this case, um, focusing on the strike fighters is not going to take a lot of resources from you and at the same time you are going to be able to make the biggest air force in the history of the game. By the way, speaking of which, uh, after this uh, series I will make a video showing you the biggest air force in the history of the game. And yes, it was a game with my fans where I, play, uh, where I played with Russia and I made a huge air force composed of 150 strike fighters and I attacked one nation with my all 150 strike fighters. Of course, don't worry, I will keep the suspense. After the series I will make that video for you guys and I will show you 150 max level Suhoi strike fighters on the battlefield. Stay tuned. And of course you need to subscribe and like our videos so you can have all of our new videos of course. Let's continue now in our war. I'm trying here as fast as I can to clean all the Scandinavian soil. Uh, I already started with Sweden which was of course occupied by Poland and when I declared war on Poland I of course I was obliged to take his colonies over the Scandinavian soil. So after I finish those cities, those Polish cities there, I will move on to take down the remaining cities of Sweden and Norway. That's how things will go. This is our eastern front, where we are going through the Asian continent. This place really annoyed me so much because it was full of rogue state and also it is full of mountains. So taking it really took ages like uh, since the part 3 or part 4 I am trying to clean those lands like it's not going to end so soon it's bothering me so much here my navy is going to interfere in the war and it's going to bombard the capital Helsinki to help my air force to take down those existing units there because there is uh, a land radar existing this is our front Poland now is totally under our reign Poland is officially a Russian colony now, only remaining the city of Lublin because it is under rogue state now. Insurgency have, has taken over the city and now it's, it needs to be liberated by the Russian forces. Let's clean this front and later on we move on with next wars. So one of the commands in the in my previous part, he said, this lobby was so easy and so weak, like, he saw that I am expanding so fast with Russia, and of course I am doing very well here in the game, and he said, like, it is so easy, like, you are facing no resistance here. Okay, I need to get back to my first war in the game, where 
I launched a large scale war on a full coalition composed of Syria, Turkey, and uh, Israel. These lads were so active in the beginning and they were expanding so fast, you understand? And they took over like half of Asia in the day of 10 or 11. It's, it's tremendous and amazing, to be honest. So the first thing I thought to do is to engage in war with them, to hit them in the back while they are occupied on their fronts and to break them before getting so big. So that decision was so crucial and it made the game so easy for me, understand? Because when I break the most active players around me, because you know, Turkey is on my borders, Syria also is so close to me. So all of these, when they took down Iran and Afghanistan and Pakistan, like they will expand so fast and they will be on my borders later. And playing with Russia and having a lot of enemies around you, isn't going to be easy and they will bother you so much so that's what i did i destroyed them so fast so later i will not find no problems in the future so yes that made um the game easy for me because i break my closest enemies so fast and the remaining uh, nations i chose them to be like friends we made some diplomacy such as china and the united kingdom yes uh, we gave each other the right of way, yes, of course, uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky because sometimes you get betrayed when you give the right of way, but after all, and you need to trust someone to get your back, you understand? If you are able to watch your back and alone you can protect it, okay, you don't need no one to trust, but if you can't and your uh, nation is so huge, you need someone to watch your back, then yes, you have no choice but to trust someone to give you that protection, you understand? So this is our casualties with Finland where I destroyed him so fast. And with the time lapse, I didn't want to lose so many time in this war, in this video. This is Finland in front of you guys. Like it was the fastest, the fastest invasion uh, in the history of the game. It was so fast, I didn't lose no time. My strikers, they destroyed everything so fast. They were so efficient, of course. They destroyed everything in their way and later my infantry when they entered the Finnish lands they found everything empty so it's not like the winter war what happened before the world war ii where the soviet union uh, had a little war with finland and the finnish resistance they didn't let the soviet forces to cross their borders you understand so um in this war we literally found no resistance, we demolished them so fast, and the Air Force, they did their job perfectly. As usual here, I am fighting the rogue state all over the continent. Soon Finland will be uh, cleaned, all those provinces and the city of Ulu and Rovaniemi, they will be cleaned soon as well. I am on the borders of the city of Vasa, also Vampire, Turku as well, and the capital will fall so soon. All of it will be mine. Now we are already on the uh, borders of the point 1200 points. The second one will be like approximately 600 so yes we are so far and we had like a leap of faith here uh, we are advancing so fast in the game i want to to be honest in this game in particular i want i want to have my personal record because before i didn't win a game before day like uh, 40 i always win after uh, 40 you understand so in this game i really want to make um a record a personal record where i finish this game in solo after day 40. i will try my best to be at fast pace and to defeat my enemies so fast and take as much lands as i can to be able to finish this game so quickly so, so this is the annexed city of Niigata. I'm going to start making the arms industry. Osaka is under annexing too. 
This is where I spoke in the last part, uh, which is so important to annex these cities in Japan to uh, fortify my presence in the Pacific Ocean. Also, Hawaii is mine now, and it is so strategical place. I'm going to uh, make arms industry to boost up my uh, supplies production there, and later I will annex Hawaii because I will need to start making navy from there. Okay, uh, I will choose later in Hawaii. Either I make uh, the air base and start making the naval recon aircrafts there or I will start making destroyers so I will see what kind of variety of the uh, actions in the upcoming uh, days and of course I will choose what I will focus on primarily Navy or Air Force later on so this is the diplomatic map and in orange as well is the Russian Empire look how beautiful and big it is Wait until I finish all the Scandinavian uh, lands and you will see how our empire will expand from west to east. It's only a little process of taking the uh, remaining provinces and cities here. And of course I need to uh, finish my war so fast. I need to control my morale of course because expanding so fast and making a lot of enemies at the same time is going to really um, hit my morale and of course having a bad morale will affect our resources protection for sure. Okay now Osaka is annexed, Hiroshima I'm going to start making the arms industries for sure and level them up quickly. I'm going to need a lot of components. It's important for my troops production. I'm mobilizing a, uh, uh, a division there in Hawaii. Later on I will be able to use it against the Americans. And by Americans I mean the Latin Americans coalition because the United States is taken by Mexico now, okay? So that's what I mean. And now officially I started making the naval recon aircrafts level 1. My city of Arkhangelsk, far, far the north, have the airbase level 3 and I start making the naval recon aircrafts. What is very good about the naval recon aircrafts? First of all, when they are upgraded, they have a wide radar range. It's very good. It's up to 250. Also, the naval recon aircrafts, they can detect stealth naval units such as the ballistic submarines and the attack submarines okay so yes they will detect anything in the soil uh, in the sea and they will give you a very good vision on what kind of troops what kind of armies what kind of ships they can come at you from the sea and also they are to be honest they have a great damage uh, against submarines and of course uh, ships so the naval recon aircrafts, for those who really know how to play with them, they are so deadly and they are so good. Finland now is mine and I am going to start preparing myself for the Swedish and Norwegian Lands. You see there, there is a tank division in the city of Yul. I will finish the remaining provinces here from Finland and when I finish this war of course it is finished in this uh, moment I will go to the remaining Scandinavian nations now the production of the naval recon aircrafts will not stop it will be 24 and 24 hours for sure I need to catch up and make a lot of them they will be so helpful and of course I need to level them up so quickly the level 2 now is underway and I'm going for um, the level six or level four of destroyer of course level five level five yes i need the range of 100 so soon because the range of 100 in the ships is going to be so helpful and yeah i will need it 
this is what I am building in my cities. It's a combination of naval recon aircraft, uh, destroyers, infantries, and of course, the strike fighters. My coastal cities are producing the destroyers, and the other cities who have the air bases, they are going to focus on the air force. Let's go to the city of Brest. These are free resources they are laying there, I need to go take them. Now Finland is finished and I'm starting to prepare my troops on the borders with um, Sweden and Norway. Libya is mine too. I will, I will continue my way there to Tunisia and those lands of Algeria, of course. My eastern front to the Asian front, of course, is still underway to be cleaned up. I need to move carefully here because this place is roaming with insurgents. So yeah, I don't need to encounter insurgents while I am moving my separate infantry there. I will lose a lot of HP points, of course, and I will lose a lot of units for sure. So yeah, I need to move carefully. Let's go to Jammu and later on New Delhi. The good thing about having the strike fighters when they are leveled up, like you can use them for anything and everything and anywhere, and also they have respectable range, like compared to the helicopters, the strike fighters have a really wide range that can be useful, like when you, when you have a European nation and you focus on the strike fighters, your strikers they literally can cover all of Europe. Yes, like we can say 80% of Europe. We can say that you are playing with Austria in the middle of Europe, okay? And you focus on the strike fighters, like you have the, the, the base of command will be the capital Vienna. With the range of level 4 of strike fighters, you can fly approximately all over Europe. That's the good thing about them. Okay, now I'm starting to declare war on Norway here, you see? So Norway looks like an active inactive player from the beginning of the map he started in the beginning but later i think he left so yes uh, let's just clean them there is here a tank division in this city of a swedish city here so let's go clean them up so fast take these lands uh have our points the required points for this amazing solo win with the russian empire I hope that the Americans, they don't really come now, I'm not really fully prepared for them. Because you know here my troops are, are not like prepared in one spot, they are really all over uh, Europe and all over Asia there. So I'm not really prepared and focused on one state. A surprise attack now from a good navy or from a lot of land troops is not going to be easy to handle to be honest, so yeah. Uh, that's why I'm trying to finish uh, the Scandinavian nations as soon as possible so later I can rewrite my cards, I can focus my mind and choose my next target. Maybe I will continue expanding in Europe because uh, looks like China is finding a lot of problems with Serbia. Yes, China like managed to take down two or three homeland cities of Serbia but he really was pushed off. Serbia presented a huge resistance there to liberate his uh, uh, cities. So I don't really trust that China is going to finish him off there and it's going and my um, European front it's going to be chaotic like they will destroy each other and if Serbia eventually wins he will of course try to expand from my side I don't know 
what can happen so i need to think about all the scenarios and all uh, all the details here to be able to prevent any sudden attack from me okay to be able to win solo you need to play the safest gameplay as possible it's so important to be to play safe and to close all the sources of uh, danger eliminate the danger in the game don't let any chance for danger okay whenever you see a growing up player or whenever you see an active player who is growing up so fast go for him take your chance and destroy him don't say okay okay later i will take care of him no don't let him grow up don't let him expand don't let him have a good uh, economy don't let him level up his army just destroy him no problem it's going to be a long war it's going to be uh, iron against iron but eventually with a good strategy and activity for sure you will be able to win you will be able to destroy him and you will be able to expand your nation and have a good um, step forward so this is china texting me hey russia i have just one request um, it's getting uh, russia it is getting so heated you need to do something fast all of america is getting ready to attack i can only hold them back for some time take serbia i don't want it so this is officially china is retreating from serbia he couldn't take him down i will write him um don't worry i have everything under control just fight till the end here i am motivating china so he don't really quit the game so he don't really um i don't know he is losing against serbia and i don't know maybe is well Serbia he proved to be a very good player look here he really get got back all of his nation like you saw China the kind of troops he have he have advanced like level very good leveled up main battle tanks and motorized infantry and yet Serbia pushed him off and took back all of his uh, nation this is this is amazing so officially yes my next target will be Serbia in the next episode for sure because this episode is coming to an end here in the next episode we will prepare ourselves for the war against serbia serbia is not going to be an easy target because you know china with all of his forces he couldn't take down serbia and despite he took down many of his homeland cities yet serbia managed to, take to uh, have them back to fight and push forward and push back china that's amazing and so impressive to be honest and yes in the next episode there would be a very beautiful war against Serbia and of course expanding in the European soil is going to be very good for us and that region is full of uh, points is full of HP so yes it's going to boost up our rank and maybe 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 the next part or maybe the after next part it's going to be the last one because we are going to the end we are already in 1400 points now and yes we only need another 400 pound, uh, points to win so i say bye bye see you in the next part